are studies that show that women um, as founders tend to build businesses that have a greater ESG impact. Um, this is not to say that it's necessarily focused on that and it's not a charitable product uh, project. It's not um, a nice project, but they just bring on board principles of um, of what we might consider the, the UN Sustainable Development Goals or something like that when they're building their business. Um, so Carolina, have you noticed this from where you sit as an investor and, and why do you think that is the case? Yeah, it's really interesting. And of course, anything I see is, is kind of purely anecdotal, right? Because I, I haven't seen it all. Um, but I do think that um, female founders tend to be or at least a lot of the ones I've met, have been so purpose-driven. Um, and so not only is that part of the journey, not to say that the business is, is an ESG business in itself, but it's also part of everything and all the internal processes and how they think about their impact um, and how they think about their employees. Um, and and, and it, it's always front, um, front of mind. Um, as opposed to many other businesses where the idea first is, okay, let's find product market fit, let's get some customers, um, and then we'll tackle some of these ESG things. Um, and then this ends up being tackled much, much later, <laughs> which is fine and, you know, better late than ever. Um, but, um, but I think, you know, it, impact it tends to be important to women. Um, and that, of course, then gets reflected if you have, you know, women in, in leadership. One of the things I wanted to ask you, Laurel, as um, a longtime operator and very, very senior woman in fintech, is if you could give some examples for us of some strategic initiatives um, of how tech companies today or startups are actually creating environments that help get more women into leadership roles. And are there any companies that you admire in particular? I think there's there's things that companies have to start offering every, all employees. Like at Klarna, for example, we had a very generous um, paternity and maternity leave, for example, in, in some countries so that everyone could enjoy, you know, being at home with their, their new, new baby or their child. I think that was extremely important. I think there's initiatives like that to attract talent. Talent's quite hard to attract nowadays. You have to, you know, think about it more holistically, the offer that you're providing to uh, potential employees and what what you bring to the table. So I think those are things like that. I think are what make you att attractive in a very competitive market. And you have to think as a company, what are some of those things that you you can do to to make sure that the person not only flourishes at work, but in the, their professional environment, but also in their their personal life as well. And Carolina, you know, sitting on the on the boards of um, Vinted, bought by many, but then of course having visibility on. Um, your portfolio companies and others, I'm sure. Is it fair to say we've made a lot of progress um, when it comes to women in senior roles, especially in startups? And um, the reason I, I ask this is because I think there's a really great virtuous circle that happens when we get senior operators in startups in the event of um, an exit, you know, Perhaps there is equity there that becomes liquid, which means that it can be reinvested into really exciting new projects or businesses or female founders. So are, have we made enough progress? Not enough, for sure. Um, but I think from the very low baseline, um, they used to be the world of entrepreneurship when it came to diversity in general, but let's just stick with, with women at this point because it's just better documented. Um, we've made a lot of progress, and I think part of that is it has been the awareness, right? And has been the fact that a lot of attention has been brought to this issue. And, and A, I, you find that, and I find that so many entrepreneurs genuinely care about this, and they want to change. Um, and of course, awareness is a first step. The next step is, okay, how do you change this? <laughs> right? So how do you actually bring, and it's, it's interesting and it ties back to one of the things we talked about before, which is when I'm talking to a female entrepreneur or even a diverse entrepreneur, I don't worry, um, about the answer of, you know, how diverse is your team? It's always super diverse. 
Um, whereas the other side of that is almost always not true. Um, so particularly when you start going into, you know, tech teams or senior teams, right? When you start segmenting the, the team, um, a little bit of background noise off, but, um, but so I, I, I think that it's changing. There's a lot of awareness. People are increasingly have objectives and goals that they want to reach. What I'd like to see more of is those get attached to incentives. Um, so if you don't reach some of these goals, there are some repercussions. And if you reach them, there's positive, right? To go back to the meritocracy point, um, because teams are better if they're diverse and that's a real thing. And there should be real KPIs and incentives around that. Um, and I think when that happens, um, and investors and their carry are starting to get attached to those things. Um, then I think we will make more progress and we will make faster progress, um, more than, than we've done so far. Definitely. I agree. I agree with all that. You know, it used to, is it perfect? No. Is it better? Yes, definitely. We have to be, be brave and, you know, put ourselves out there, whether we're totally comfortable with that all the time or not. But now there's a responsibility for the company to offer us a seat at the table as, as well, right? There's this give and take that before it was all on us. You need to do this. But no, actually, the company needs to offer you the opportunity to have your voice heard. And there's much more thoughtfulness around that point, I think, than there ever used to be. I agree. I had a mentor once say when she was starting out um, as a banker, forget about having a seat at the table. She was just trying to get into the room. 